everyone in this video I'll be going over how to create uh, surfaces and calculate quantities from your corridor um, to start off um, you're probably gonna need some sample lines and create section views just so we can verify our surfaces and um, yeah so on the corridor properties tab you'll go here and um, you can click this button, create corridor surface to create your first surface. So I'm gonna make this surface of the datum. And on here, we can select our link. So we'll select datum here. Um, and then for the style, uh, let's keep it like that and add this for the bottom and then um, or overhang correction since this is a datum surface um, we will use bottom links and I'll explain that in a bit okay so we created our datum surface here um, actually one more thing that you can do here is you can give your surface a boundary and I use corridor extents as boundary um, so that will just trim up the surface and limit it to the corridor extents. There you go. And um, just to explain what we just did, um, on your um, sub-assemblies, uh, they'll have link codes. Link codes, uh, either top, datum, you can even create your own if you want. Um, just to differentiate the different links. And what we just did was we created um, a surface that follows all the datum link codes. So this one here, um, this is a shoulder subassembly and it will have two link codes even though it's not shown here. Um, there's a datum one at the bottom and a top one at the top. So what our surface essentially does is follow from this point goes down here and it just follows all of our links until the daylight. And we can take a look at how that looks like by adding it to our section groups. So over here, we'll click on our sample lines. We'll add more surface, uh, more, uh, more sources, sorry. And then we can add that in there. Um, we can add, uh, give it a different style. So let's make a finished ground. Uh, let's just look at what that style looks like so we can see it. Um, so in section, I'm just gonna make it uh, like pink so we can see it easier. Um, let's rebuild it. And there we go. So you can see now that we have this datum surface and that's going to be one of the key surfaces for cal calculating quantities. Um, yeah, and you could just do a couple of spot checks to make sure that it's following your assembly correctly. Sometimes, especially if you don't apply the border, um, you'll notice that it extends beyond the EG surface or maybe sometimes it might cut too soon, um, things like that. So just do a couple of spot checks and see that it's good. Um, the other thing I wanted to explain was the overhang correction. So there are a few options here and um, there's really just top and bottom links or none. Um, and what that means is um, if you look at a typical subassembly and you'll see that there are multiple points, there's a point here, point here, point here, and sometimes there might be a case where each point will have multiple datum links. So this point might have a datum and this point might have a datum, even though it shouldn't. Um, when you select bottom links as your overhang correction, it just means that it'll take the bottom point and vice versa for the top. Uh, so now we've created our bottom sur uh, surface or datum surface. I'm gonna go ahead and create the stripping surface as well, which is important for calculating stripping quantities. 
Um, so same thing here. I will create a new surface. I will call it stripping. And um, I don't think I need to do overhang correction in this case. Um, and here I'll just turn this off. Um, so there's two types. Uh, I'll just add both. You can add multiple links to one of them if you want. Um, let's just put bottom. Okay. And also we want to add the outer boundary again. Let's rebuild it. Once again, so now we've we would have created this surface and we want to check it. Um, so once again, I will add it to our sample group, corridor stripping. And let's make a copy of this finished ground surface and let's call this stripping. And we will make it green just so we can see it easily. Okay, let's take a look. There we go, there is our stripping surface. So these surfaces are important um, when you wanna calculate quantities and I'll show you how to do that. Um, another thing you can do with these surfaces now is um, you can actually export them. So you can go output, export to XML. Um, I like to select this button to uncheck everything and you can actually um, you go down to your surface you can now export these to xml files which can be used on the field or in other like gis programs and things like that okay so now we've got our two surfaces and we want to calculate some cut fill quantities and in this case i want to also calculate stripping so stripping will be um, between the EG surface and the stripping line. So this bit here will be stripping. And the difference between the stripping line and the datum will be uh, cut. Um, yeah, so that's an important thing because once we've stripped it, you know, we're gonna be comparing to the stripping line instead of the EG because otherwise we'll be double counting the stripping. So you got to think about how you're going to calculate your quantities when you're going to be doing this this step here. So um, let's go to Analyze tab, Compute Materials, and make sure you select your sample group because your, your surfaces need to be in the sample group to do this. So let's go here. Um, and then it'll ask you for several different things. So let's do the stripping one first. So for stripping, we don't have any fill, so I'm not going to do both of them. So we're comparing the EG surface and our datum surface in this case will be the stripping surface. So we'll do stripping and no shapes or anything. Um, I'll hit OK. That's OK. Oh, there we go. Um, I'm actually going to go back there. So now you can see that we have this material list. So I'll call this stripping. And this is good. Um, so one one nice way to check is make sure the hatch is correct. Uh, sometimes, like you might have this in the wrong order, and it would it wouldn't do it correctly. So let's change this to stripping uh, strip hatch. Let's see what that looks like. Um, okay, we can actually change this style. So display, you want to select the section here and let's change the pattern let's do this one <clears throat> actually let's make it this one okay 
and then the scale let's do 0.1 Hit apply. Okay, so we want to actually increase the scale here. Let's go back to section, let's go 0 0.01. Okay, there we go. It's a bit more noticeable now. Okay. Um, okay, and then we can now calculate the rest of the materials this exact same way. Um, we will do cut and fill. So here we can import a new criteria. Um, we can do cut and fill again. Um, so for this one, um, so as I said before, we've already taken care of the top one foot of the EG with the stripping. So actually we will compare now to the stripping as our EG because if we compare it back to the to the original ground surface, we will be double counting the stripping. Um, so here we'll go to the datum and we'll hit OK. And then here um, we can name this something cut and fill. OK, so cut material, yeah, fill material, that's good. Uh, let's hit OK. And we'll see how that looks. Okay, here we go. So, so I, I always like to double check this. Like um, sometimes you get it backwards. So I clicked on the hatch, and you can see it here it says ground fill. Um, it's a bit difficult to select the hatch. Okay, well, one other thing I will do is, okay, we can change the style a little bit. Uh, let's change the cut material style. Oh, it's red. Doesn't look red. Hmm. Um, let's look at the fill material. Okay. Let's go to the section. Let's actually make this solid fill. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, there we go. Oh, now I can select it. Yeah, you can see that's the ground removed. So you can see this is the stripping and the ground fill is now in addition to the stripping. Yeah, this looks good now. Um, oh, I see why it was not looking correct. It's because, yeah, another way you can do it is through here. You can edit it directly from this menu. So we'll go back to the section and We'll change this to solid. And there we go. Now we got our basic hatching for our cut fill. The other one is the, the actual sub ballast. So we will go here. Um, and sometimes you can, you can do all of these in one um, material. It depends on how you have your material list set up. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm just using the basic AutoCAD ones. Um, so here we can select all these various different types of um, base materials that are in our um, sub ballast shoulder assembly. In this case, I'm just going to use the sub base because that's all there was. Um, We'll call that sub ballast. And just to check that this works, I'm going to confirm that 
Okay, it's solid, so it should be green. It should turn green if it works. And there we go. Um, yeah, and then to check your quantities, um, you can go to volume report, select the material list that you want, and you can go here and select the various report formats. Um, I like to select materials, but you can try the other ones as well. Hit OK. And you can run scripts. Um, and there we go. These are the, you can see it's doing an end area calculation and you can copy all of this or hit control A to copy all and you can paste this directly into Excel. And you can then manipulate it any way you like and submit your and get quantities directly from your Excel sheet. And that concludes my um, surface corridor surface tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.